This is part six of our series on how to use Ultimaker Cura for complete beginners. In this video, we will learn how to use a brim to prevent warping and discuss why you would use a brim versus a raft or a skirt. So in our last video, we 3D printed this slide-on attachment for our printer. And when we printed our drawer, we discovered that there was a little bit of warping going on with our drawer. And I wanted to discuss this concept of warping in this video and how to prevent it. So to discuss warping, I want to show you a different part. Now, I really like this specific 3D print because it allows you to measure metric screws. What you can do is you can take some screw, and I don't have a metric screw on me, but you can take some screw and you place it on here like this, and it'll tell you the length of the metric screw, and then you can use these side edges to figure out the width of your metric screw. So you could figure out if it fits in here, it would be an M3, and then if it goes down to, let's say, uh, this one's going to 18, so it would be an M3, dash 18 screw and so you can quickly figure out what size screw you have it's a very useful print here is another one that i printed without a brim you can see that there is quite a lot of warping going on it doesn't have that flat bottom that this one has and this part still works more or less at least on the top end there is some more things on the bottom that you can do with these prints but you can see that there was a problem with warping. And so I want to discuss that in this video. And so why did the warping happen? Well, if we look at this drawer, the reason why it happened mostly is because we printed it with just a skirt. So Ultimaker actually has a really good article on what warping is and ways to prevent it. And I'll link to this article so that you can read through it yourself. But you can see what's kind of going on is as the printer is printing, some of the edges will actually start to warp up because of a, well, it's called a thermal moment. But all you need to know is sharp corners tend not to hold down very well. And they need to be anchored down in order to prevent that warping effect. There are a few things that you can do to prevent it, including heating your build plate. We can actually look at that if we scroll up and look in the material of our settings. You can see that you can change your build plate temperature. Um, there are other things you can do, like making sure your bed is level or applying some sort of adhesive like a glue stick or even certain brands of hairspray work i found um, but the easiest and the best way to prevent warping in the first place is to use a brim or a raft and so let's talk about that let's go down to our adhesion and let's add a brim instead of a skirt and hit slice and you can see that it changes what it looks like now now we have sort of this side support wrapping around our print completely and this is the brim and it looks similar to what a raft does right it adds that extra surface area to your print and if we go down to the first layer you can see that it's a part of the first layer and that's it and so what does it do well it sticks to your print on the outside edge and it adds to that surface area and you can see that it rounds off at the end. And so if it's already round, if we look at the example they give, it's already round. But it adds to that surface area and makes sure that it's rounded in the end. And so that extra surface area can act as a sort of anchor preventing this warping from happening. You can see how this, even though it might want to warp up, the extra surface area on the outside of that can anchor it down, preventing that the raft does the same thing more or less let's go ahead and switch to a raft here and hit slice it also adds to that extra surface area and creates this sort of anchoring effect holding down those corners those edges the main difference is the raft covers the entire bottom and so it creates actually not just one layer but four layers is i think the standard setting um, going back and forth in this sort of crisscross mesh. And it does add that extra 
surface area but again it goes underneath the entire print so that when I go to the fifth layer you can see that this just prints on top of the raft and that's really the main difference between a brim and a raft is the raft is more layers and the raft goes underneath the entire print whereas the brim if we slice this does not go underneath the entire print it just connects around the edges and it's only in the first layer and so the brim and the raft do a lot of similar things one advantage to the brim is it uses less material another advantage is you get that first layer on the print bed versus that first layer on the raft um, it can actually cause problems with the first layer aesthetics the raft can make the bottom layer look bad of the print when you remove the raft itself and that's because you're not printing that first layer on the bed itself. You're printing it on top of more plastic that you then have to remove. And so it might not look as good on that bottom layer. It could potentially mess up some of that detail. And so if aesthetics are really important to the print, you might not want the raft. You might want the brim instead. But these are the main differences between the brim and the raft. And so when do you know you need to add a brim or a raft? Well, in my experience, warping happens mostly at corners, and the sharper a corner is, the more likely it is to warp. And so whenever I have any kind of sharp corners like this, it is a good idea to add a brim on there just to give you that anchor to hold those corners down. And so let's take a look. Let's get rid of this. Let's take a look at that measuring tool because I have it in my files here. If we go to open, I have it in teaching support. It's not showing up. It might still be as a zip folder here. So if I go into my files to teaching support, and yes, I need to unzip it. So I'm going to go to extract all on it and hit extract. And you can see now that I now have another folder that's not a zip folder that I can open and I can go find these files. Let's go ahead and open it again from my Cura. We'll go to teaching support and you can see this folder is now here and i'm not sure which one it is let's go ahead and just go with a threaded one and okay we saw the warping that happened with this and so when i print it i would make sure i would include a brim or a raft i also want to turn off supports on this one i don't want any of this to have supports why would i want a brim versus a raft well in this case i know i'd want to brim because there's already so much surface area touching the build plate i don't need that extra surface area i just want to anchor down the corners um, to prevent that warping we can actually make our brim width even wider let's go ahead and do that if we hover over our build plate adhesion tab you'll see this little filter setting it takes us into the same place this manage settings visibility if we click on it, we're looking straight at build plate adhesion. We're already there, which is kind of nice. I want to find brim width and turn it on. And if you can't find it, you can just type in the setting that you're looking for, of course. Um, what does that do? It allows me to change the brim width to a wider brim if I think that this isn't good enough. Or if I think it's too much, I can lower the setting a little bit. And there's pros and cons to it, but one of the reasons why I might lower the setting if I need a brim, but my print has taken up the majority of the bed, you can see the wider I make my brim, the less of the bed I will actually get in my settings. So if I increase this to 10, for example, the higher and higher I go, the less space I have around the print itself. But I don't need to go that high to make this point. Hopefully this is pretty intuitive. If you think about it, a brim takes up more space of your print bed than just the print itself. And so the wider your brim gets, the less build plate you actually get to print with and so you might want to lower the brim width a little bit in that case but normally the five millimeters is a good place to go to it usually works pretty well it just allows for that anchor and so now i can print this without the fear of it warping up the brim actually comes off really easily you can just use your flush cutters to just sort of cut or scrape it off it, it comes off pretty clean and so that's more or less how i would prevent that warping on this print and that was just a lesson that i had to learn the hard way and so if i were to throw in let's say those puzzle cubes for example um, if we look in i have it in my teaching support folder and i'm going to go ahead and open them all up at the same time and it looks like they sort of blob them all together so I'm gonna have to move them around a little bit 
but if you look at these files you can see they have very sharp corners and so to play it safe I might use my brim to make sure that those corners anchor down so that when they print they just work and if they're too close together you'll see the brims will intersect which might be a good thing I might give that extra anchoring effect um, you know both sides are holding each other down of course if you want to get that full brim width we'll just move it a little bit further out and slice it again but you can kind of see why I would use a brim here instead of a raft. Well, again, because there's so much surface area already touching, I just want to make sure those corners get held down. Versus that Iron Man mask that I showed you in a previous video, so little surface area was touching, it made more sense to add the raft over the brim, especially for the supports. Okay, so that is the brim versus the raft. Okay, what about versus the skirt and none? So if we go to the skirt, you can see kind of what the skirt does. The skirt draws around your print entirely, and that's pretty much its only job. And why does it do that? Well, it allows you to watch the first layer and make sure that the printer is level all the way across. And so sometimes your print bed is just a little bit off. And so on one side, it's printing just fine. But on the other end of the printer, it's either digging into the bed or it's a little bit too high. And therefore, it's not going to stick to the bed. And so the skirt just sort of makes sure by drawing an outline that everything inside your skirt will adhere to the plate very well because you have that very good first layer. Um, and so if I were to print something like, let's say, the Flexirex, let's go ahead and get rid of all of these and go grab that out of my fun folder. So when I'm printing this, I would most likely use a skirt. You might use a raft or a brim, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of using a raft or a brim on a print in place print like this in the next video but i would probably just use a skirt and the advantages to a skirt is i like to whenever i'm printing something anything i like to keep an eye on that first layer to make sure it's going to print well that way i can walk away with confidence knowing that it's not going to fail because the first layer didn't adhere and so if that skirt draws around it i can assume since the skirt itself adhered to the bed really well all of the area inside of it will also adhere to the bed really well. And that's the main reason why I almost always use the skirt whenever I am printing anything that doesn't require a raft or a brim. And so when would I say none? When would I include none as an option? And the only real reason I would ever include none is if I sized this up so big. And so if we size it up, um, for whatever reason, I wanted this to fit on the edges of the bed, and I wanted it to go as far as possible. Um, if I were to have that skirt, you can see it's going to be hard to draw around this as we get to the edges of the print. I wouldn't want the skirt because then I get that little bit extra closer to the edge. And so depending on the print, I might do that, um, but that rarely ever happens. I'm almost always having the skirt on if I don't have the brim or the raft. And so that's all four of the build plate adhesion types and sort of a summary of, you know, the pros and cons of using each ones. Again, read through this yourself and you'll see the pros and the cons and how to use each one. But hopefully this helped you understand why you would use one or the other. We'll go a little bit more in detail of it in the next video, um, specifically for articulating print and place prints like this one.